Chapter 6. Programming and Debugging. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss the general flow for programming a device, and debugging it on physical hardware. Chapter 6 consists of four sections. In the first section of the chapter, Programming Basics, we will review the general flow for programming a device using Radian. In section 2 of the chapter, Device Programming with Programmer, we are going to discuss Radian's programmer tool, and how it can be used to program a device. In the third section of the chapter, Debugging with Reveal Inserter, we will introduce Radian's Reveal Inserter tool, and discuss how it can be used to add debug cores to a design. Finally, in the fourth section of the chapter, called Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller, we will discuss Reveal Analyzer and Controller, and how it can be used. Chapter 6, Section 4. Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing the basics for debugging a design using Radiance Reveal Analyzer and Controller. As mentioned earlier in the video series, after debug cores have been added to a project, the process flow will have to be run again. Once a device has been programmed with the updated bitstream with debug cores, Reveal Analyzer can be used. There are two ways Reveal Analyzer can be launched. The first way, is by clicking the Reveal Analyzer icon from Radiance toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to launch Reveal Analyzer, is to select tools from Radiance menu bar, and then Reveal Analyzer slash controller, from the drop-down list of options that appears. Once Reveal Analyzer has been launched, its startup window will appear, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The Reveal Analyzer startup wizard can be used to create a new RVA file, or open an existing one. To create a new Reveal Analyzer project file, select the option at the top of the window, called Create a New File. The name of the file should be defined in the field next to this option. Once a name has been determined, users should detect the device they are programming using the USB port. XCF source, and debug device fields. A useful feature of Reveal, is that the detect button can be used to detect a USB port, and that the scan button can be used to scan for a device. As mentioned before, the device must already be programmed with the updated bitstream, and must also be connected to the same computer so it can be detected. Aside from that, users will also need to specify the Reveal inserter file they use to add debug cores to their project. Once this information has been populated, Users should click the OK button in the bottom right, to finish generating the Reveal Analyzer project session. Once Reveal Analyzer has been launched, users should see something similar to the figure on the slide. The contents in this window, depends on the active debug core of the project. To view and switch the active debug core, select the drop down at the top of the window, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. To begin running a debugging session, use the debug button at the top of the window. It should be noted, that for a debug session to be run, the status icon of the analyzer window should say ready, indicating that the device is ready for debugging. Another useful feature, is that users can select which cores are analyzed during the debug session, by enabling or disabling the checkboxes for a core at the top of the window. Now that we've discussed the basics of Reveal Analyzer, we are going to discuss the tabs for its different debug cores in a little more depth. The first debug core we are going to discuss, are Logic Analyzer cores. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, Logic Analyzer cores also have two tabs in Reveal Analyzer. The first tab, LA Trigger, is the default tab for Analyzer cores, and is used to configure the settings for Logic Analysis. The content of this window will be similar to the second tab of Logic Analyzer cores in Reveal Inserter, and will display the various trigger units and expressions that were set up. A useful feature of Reveal Analyzer, is that it can be used to modify some of the settings for trigger units and expressions. It should be noted, however, that Reveal Analyzer cannot be used to create new trigger units and expressions. At the very bottom of this tab, are the trigger options. The trigger options for a debug session, control how much of a waveform is captured, and how trigger expressions are activated. The other section, called Trigger Position, can be used to change where the trigger appears by default in the LA Waveform tab. The other tab for Logic Analyzer cores, called LA Waveform, will be blank until a debug session is run. Once a debug session is run, and the trigger expression conditions are met, the LA Waveform tab will be updated, displaying the waveforms of the trace signals that were specified earlier on. 
The example on the slide displays the waveforms that were captured for the example on the previous slide. As can be seen from this figure, the waveform window is fairly simple. On the left side of the window are the trace signals that were captured from the debug session. Next to each trace signal is the value for that signal at the position the trigger cursor is located at. One thing to note is that the time scale at the top of the window does not correspond to any time unit and instead corresponds to the number of samples. For example, the value at 016 is actually the 16th sample taken for a trace signal. How many samples, and how the trace signals are recorded, can be configured using the LA trigger tab. The second type of debug core we are going to discuss, are controller cores. As can be seen from the figure on the screen, there are also three controller tabs in Reveal Analyzer, each of which correspond to a tab that was configured in Reveal Inserter. In order to use one of these tabs, the same tab in Inserter must also have been enabled. The Virtual LED Switch tab is used to manage the virtual signals that were configured in Reveal Inserter. At the top of the window are the virtual LEDs that were set up. To begin observing LED values, click the Start Polling button. The polling speed setting can be used to control how frequently the virtual LED is updated. In the bottom half of this tab are the virtual switches that were set up. In this section of the window, users can modify the value of a virtual switch by toggling the button icon or entering a value in the data field. Once a value has been entered, users need to confirm the value using the apply button. A useful feature of this tab is that the direct mode option can be enabled so the virtual switch functions like a real switch. This will make it so any values users enter will be input instantaneously and will not require users to click the apply button. That concludes the Radiant introductory training series. To view additional information for learning how to use Lattice Radiant, refer to the links in the description of the video.